On the program today, Food and Agriculture Organization says Kenya is beating back desert low-cost infestation for now. Libya's oil exports set to dwindle as ports blockade persists. And Congo to suspend value-added tax exemption for mining imports. Hello and welcome and thank you for joining us on Business Incorporated. I'm Chimizi Obi Iwago. Let's get the show started with the markets and the major markets we track here in Africa. We're all positive at intraday with the JSC index gaining the most by almost uh, 2%. Nigeria's main index sustained the positive sentiment seen since the beginning of the new month and was up by 0.15%. Egypt's EGX30 added 0.50% while Kenya closed negative on Tuesday. And in the Middle East, major markets were mixed at intraday. Saudi Arabia's index rose 0.55%, while the Qatari index lost 0.49%. In the UAE, Abu Dhabi's index declined by 0.28%, while Dubai's index rose marginally by 0.03%. And European stocks traded higher this morning as investors digested another round of major corporate earnings reports. But weaker than expected Eurozone economic data capped gains. Well, let's bring in Conrad Busen now for more. Hello, Conrad. Good afternoon. Well, let's talk about gold first. The price of gold has climbed to a new record. One ounce is being traded for more than 2,000 US dollars for the first time since the beginning of this year. The value of gold has increased more than 30%. Now, our traders starting to call this a bubble. And um, are you looking at investing in gold? <laughs> I personally am not really, um, um, Jimmy. You know, I still have to pay my mortgage and eventually hope that this uh, house imagine. I live in will eventually be mine. <laughs> but, of course, um, uh, the topic is hot here at the trading floors. And uh, I can tell you that traders hate the B word bubble because it scares off real uh, 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 um, smaller investors, mostly mom and pop investors, a lot of them going for gold, of course. Uh, but traders are calling this really an overheating of the gold market, which of course only underlines that financial professionals too find it difficult to really give reasonable uh, reasons uh, to explain what's going on. There's a lot of feelings involved. Fear, of course, concerns that America might um, maybe uh, not uh, continue to be as easily the number one economy that's putting a lot of pressure on the dollar that sent yields down in the United States. And there's greed behind this increase of the gold price. You know, the rally is fueling, fueling the rally uh, investors simply are buying gold because the others are buying it as well. And when feelings are involved, of course, there is the concern that uh, this might be reversed just as quickly as it has occurred. Speculative tendencies, I suppose. Anyway, on the stock markets in Europe, the mood is cautiously optimistic thanks to a number of better-than-expected earnings reports, which um, companies there are what, uh, mentioning in particular. Well, also here in Europe, a lot of talk is about Disney, the entertainment company, which managed to post a second quarter profit, a surprising one. Uh, but obviously, uh, the closing down of the theme parks of Disney uh, uh, could be make, made up a little bit at least by things like the streaming service Disney+. Plus. Here in Europe, uh, a number of companies are seeing record highs of their share prices this Wednesday. Among them, Ahold Del Hez, uh, the uh, you know, operator of uh, supermarkets, which is based in the Netherlands and Belgium, but it has supermarkets all over the world, also a lot of them in North America, and business there uh, was strong during the corona lockdown quarter. Uh, a lot of uh, online sales also by this uh, company which used to run traditional supermarkets but it's now uh, going into new ways of distribution as well. Here in Germany the real estate firm Vonovia uh, the shares reached a record high it's you know running uh, apartment blocks hundreds of thousands of them all over Germany and other parts of Europe. Um, 
compared to you know tech business models uh, vonovia is really a bit boring not very inspiring but uh, it provides a constant stream of revenue and uh, profits and this is really something that uh, investors today are rewarding and they're buying the share and Kion Group, a leading German manufacturer of uh, materials handling equipment, has announced a strategic partnership with a Chinese firm, Quicktron. How much of a risk is that in times where relations with China are often called into question? Well, at least uh, the two companies are not operating in very, you know, security sensitive parts of the business world. They're not like Huawei or TikTok, companies that lately have uh, gotten in the focus of very security sensitive policy makers. Those two companies, Kion and uh, Quicktron are, you know, operating robotics which manage uh, warehouses, large amounts of goods have to be moved from one side to the other. Still, it has to be said, they are using artificial intelligence for their products. And this time, of course, people here in Germany are wondering whether or not the Chinese might not say, hey, we don't want a German company exploit our innovations uh, and, and, and sell it. Um, this is something that is closely watched. Um, as you said, uh, relations with China are, are under scrutiny and everyone here is hoping that this deal will go through easily. Mm. All right. Thank you very much uh, for your time, Conrad. See you again tomorrow. And in the UK, the service sector records best growth since 2015. Services PMI jumped to 56.5 from 47.1 back into growth. Let's talk to Juliana. Hello, Juliana. Good afternoon. Well, let's begin on the data front. The UK service sector has recorded its strongest increase in business activity in five years. But it's worrying this recovery did not stop firms laying off staff at a faster rate than in June. That means higher unemployment rate. It does mean that, Chimna say, look, you know, there's light at the end of the tunnel, uh, but it's distant, um, but still visible. I think that's how uh, the markets are trading up this um, uh, figures from the PMI service sector. 56.5, uh, that's a significant jump in July from what we were seeing in June. Of course, 50 is uh, the point of contra expansion. Anything below uh, 50 is a contraction. And of course, it's way above what we saw in April. So some really historic eye-watering lows of 13 Point one. Uh, clearly, the reopening of the hospitality sector has buoyed the market. It's, it's boosted uh, confidence and enthusiasm. We did have uh, the stop from the start of August this help out to buy out, uh, which is the government scheme to try and get um, some of these seats full in uh, restaurants up and down uh, the country. But is it going to be enough? You mentioned uh, the labour market, and that's a major cause for concern because as this furlough scheme uh, starts to take out, we are likely to see job redundancies as we have seen earlier this week and we are likely to see uh, later this month. But it's Wednesday, hump day. The FTSE did start off um, pretty much better than expected and it's managed to keep those gains at intraday. The all share is up by 1.05%. The FTSE 100 is up by 1.10%. And the FTSE 250 is up by 1.06%. In currencies, the British pound doing pretty well, up 0.37% against the dollar, up 0.0%. 0.4% against the euro and up against the Japanese yen by 0.46% at intraday. Well, Ch Ch talking about uh, job redundancy there, bookmaker William Hill has seen a fast recovery in takings after sports betting resumed, but announced it would not reopen 119 branches closed during the coronavirus lockdown. What happens to the staff in those branches to be closed? Uh, well, William Hill have actually released a statement to the media and they've said uh, that they do not expect uh, these uh, store closures to affect too many people. I believe this involves just over 300 staff. 20 of them, unfortunately, will lose their jobs, but about 300 will be uh, redeployed in different parts of the business. Um, they are going to close over 100 stores, but they still have way over 1,000 stores that will be reopening soon. This comes as uh, they've also announced this morning that they will be repaying back uh, a big chunk of the coronavirus job retention scheme that they received 
from the government to keep their staff uh, paid while their stores were closed. This costs about £24.5 million, so they'll be giving that back uh, to the government. I'm sure the Chancellor, Rishi Shunak, will be pleased uh, to hear this. But they have also announced this morning that uh, their six-month sales to June are down by about 85%. Uh, they've posted a profit fall of about £11.8 million. Their revenues have also shrunk by 32% if you uh, compare it to this period last year. Of course, they've suffered, really. They've been open now for a, the past couple of weeks, but as soon as coronavirus kicked in in this country and some of those massive sporting events, particularly horse racing and um, English Premier League top flight football was cancelled, uh, there was no betting. So they've really struggled. They're not surprised um, at this forecast. But, you know, the fact that they'll be giving back the government there, uh, the job retention scheme money that they received is seen as a bonus. Mm. Well, you reeled out those um, intraday numbers earlier. So what headline is moving the market aside from the services sector data? Well, there's only really one story coming out of Britain uh, this week, and that's uh, job cuts, Jimmy. We spoke about it this time yesterday. You know, already there's been about 5,000 redundancies announced. Earlier in the week, um, we had DW Sports and Gyms. They said they're going to be closing 73 uh, gyms up and down England. Pizza Express, that really popular uh, high street chain uh, that has been in this country for decades, uh, said 1,100 jobs are at risk. And just uh, before I came into the studio, W. UH Smith, which is a really uh, kind of popular uh, newspaper retailer. They used to be quite popular on the high street, but over the past couple of years, they've really been making their buck in airports and train stations. Airports haven't been flying um, at capacity and not many people have been there. So they have said that they are going to be cutting 1,500 jobs. They are speaking to administrators. It isn't all of their stores, but it's a vast majority. And they're wondering whether or not they can be profitable. And also as well, I think WH Smith have got a double whammy, haven't they? Because as we are uh, moving into a digitised era, there aren't many people that like to pick up uh, magazines on the go uh, when, of course, you can use uh, your laptop laptop or your smartphone to get all of your news. So again, I think the labour market is of major concern and I think economists are going to be keeping their eye out on that in this country over the next couple of months and particularly tomorrow because we've got uh, that long-awaited uh, Bank of England Monetary Policy Committee meeting which will take place around uh, lunchtime. It'll be interesting to see what the forecasts are in this country over the next couple of months. And we can't wait to hear what the Bank of England will have to say. Thank you, Juliana. I enjoyed the rest of the day. And stocks in Asia Pacific were mixed today as uncertainty remains over the state of coronavirus relief stateside. Mainland China stocks were higher on the day. The Shanghai Composite was up 0.17%, while the Shenzhen component added 0.725%. Hong Kong's Hanseng Index gained 0.4%. Elsewhere, South Korea's Kospi jumped 1.4%. In Japan, the Nikkei 225 dipped 0.26%, while the Topics Index finished its trading day slightly lower. Meanwhile, in Australia, the S&P ASS 200 closed 0.6%. And U.S. stock futures edged higher in early trade as investors watched for progress from Washington on a new coronavirus stimulus package. The White House and Democratic congressional leaders have reported some progress in the negotiations, but they remain apart on some issues. Dow futures are the 60 points, S&P 500 and Nasdaq 100 futures also edged higher. Earnings season continues today with CVS Health, Human and closely watched Modena reporting before the opening bell. A slew of economic news also comes today that could move stocks. Private payrolls data from ADP will be released at 8.15 a.m. Eastern Time and investors will be watching if companies continue to bring back workers from their pandemic uh, follow in July. The final read on July services PMI will be released at 9.45 a.m. Eastern Time. Finally, the ISM non-manufacturing survey is set to release at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. All right, we take a break, and when we come back, we turn our eyes to Ghana to stay with us.
Ghana's central bank last week left its policy rate at 14.5%, citing a need for macroeconomic stability. Despite a slowdown brought on by the coronavirus pandemic, Ghana's economy, which relies on natural resources like cocoa, gold and oil, is expected to grow in 2020 at its lowest rate in nearly 40 years, leading the government to announce a $17.4 billion support program during a mid-year budget review by the finance minister, Ken Oforiata. Well, joining us now is the managing partner at Bespoke Business Consulting in Accra, Ghana, John Kennedy. Hello, John. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you very much for having me. Good afternoon, sir. Yes. Good afternoon. Now, give us a general overview of the current state of Ghana's economy. Well, um, I would say that the Ghanaian economy is rebounding gradually, but in a slow motion mode. When I mean slow motion, because, because it's, it's very slow at this point. Currently, we have faced a few challenges. The inflation from last quarter is about is up about 3.2 percent. That's from 7.8 percent to 11.2 percent. We see the price hike as well from last quarter to this quarter is from like 8.4 percent to 13.9 percent. And then on food, um, inflation rate is from 7.8 percent to 9.2 percent. So with this kind of um, ratios, it's very very difficult to say the economy is actually growing, but I'm sure it's actually growing in a very slow motion mode. At this hmm. point. Now, the Bank of uh, Bank of Ghana at its last uh, monetary policy committee meeting left its rate unchanged at 14.5 percent, citing a need for macroeconomic stability. But what was most important for you in the decisions reached by the committee members? Well, the most important thing is that um, they are able to recognize that um, there's a bit of a challenge, a, res a residual financial gap, and a rising inflation. When I said a receded financial gap, it means that there's, there are gaps in which um, they need financial inputs. And there's been a, a revenue underperformance in, in, the, in the economy, which means that the Ghana Revenue Authority are not able to meet up with their, their demand to um, obtain revenue so that the government can be able to do specific projects and help um, finance the COVID-19 um, 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 issues. However, there's a rising inflation as well. The rising inflation is as, is as a result of um, mostly panic buying, by, 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 by people in, in Ghana because of the rise in, in price of goods and, and services. And this has become a real challenge. So they, the government being able to recognize this, um, actually decided to put the MPC rate at that same point so that they can be able to manage how the economy moves for the next quarter. Well, we know that Ghana has been hit with a double shock a health pandemic, and of course, a global economic recession. The finance minister during his, uh, his uh, mid-year budget review projected a new fiscal deficit of about 11.4% due to a deep revenue shortfall and, of course, um, uh, unanticipated extra spending. He announced a $17.4 billion support program. What is your take in all of these? Well, my take about all of this is that um, I'm not sure if it's, it's the 17 or um, the million, uh, billion is in dollars, probably it's in cities. Because um, the main question is how are you going to fund this? Where are you going to get this funding from? Because currently, our debt stock is almost 70% of GDP. And the current deficit is about $660 million, to like 1% of, of, of GDP, the GDP. So it's very, very tricky to understand how the government to get this funding. Even if you are trying to go out for a roadshow to get this funding, every nation is trying to scramble for funds with, with IMF and, and, and World Bank. So it's very, very difficult to get this funding. The only place you can get this funding to buttress the need to spend in the, in the economy right now is to go through the local funding um, ch ch channel. However, even the Treasury bill rate has fallen from 15% to 14% within the last six months. So it's something that is loud, but it's a very difficult thing to be able to um, get the funding they need to push things in the right direction in, in, the, in the Ghanaian economy. In all of these, what is the outlook for Ghana's economy? Well, the outlook is it's not really, really encouraging. I'm sure it will still continue to rebound very, very slowly because um, we are in election year. Election is in December. There will be a lot of spending. This also affects inflation because when there's so much money out there, it will also affect um, spending as well. So it increased the level of in, uh, inflation. There will be slow recovery from the COVID-19 um, pandemic because right now they need to scramble funds from other uh, budgetary allocations to cater for the COVID-19 spending. So 
looking at how the economy is right now, I'm sure that the MPC will have to convey in the next quarter to bring down the policy rates to like 13.8% um, because people are actually need funding to do so many things at this point in time. We'll hold you to that and let's just hope that happens eventually. Thank you very much, right. John Kennedy, for your time. And the United Nations Food and Agricultural Organization says only two of the 29 Kenyan counties that were overrun by swarms of desert locusts still have the pests. The United Nations Agency leading the fight against the widespread infestation that's the worst in East Africa in at least two decades will maintain sur surveillance to reduce the risk of reinfestation towards the end of the year. The agency says efforts will be focused on Takana in northern Kenya, where the most recent swarms have been located. The FAO said in May a second wave of infestation threatens livelihoods and food security as farmers prepare to harvest crops. More than 25 million hectares of farmland were affected in Ethiopia, Kenya and Somalia, the three countries hardest hit by the voracious insects. Libya plans to export just 1.2 million barrels in August, down almost 40% from July, as most of the OPEC members' oil facilities remain shut and a civil amid a civil war. The Bauri and the forward terminals will each ship one cargo of 600,000 barrels. Both terminals lie offshore in the Mediterranean Sea, many miles from the turmoil dis dis disrupting the bulk of Libya's onshore oil facilities. Although holds Africa's biggest crude reserves, Libya's production has plummeted to about 90,000 barrels a day from 1.2 million last year. Output collapsed largely because supporters of Khalifa Haftar, an Eastern commander fighting against the United Nations-backed government in Tripoli, halted flows from many oil fields and ports. The National Oil Corporation last month briefly lifted force majeure export curbs at all ports, enabling a tanker to load about 730,000 barrels of crude from the Eastern terminal of Etsida. Barely a day later, Hafter said he would continue to blockade ports and oil fields, forcing the NOC to reinstate the exports ban. And Democratic Republic of Congo's government has suspended the value-added tax exemption on mining companies' imports in an effort to bolster state revenue. Congo, which is Africa's top copper producer, originally agreed to suspend the tax in July 2016 to help companies during a commodity price downturn and to pay down hundreds of millions of dollars in VAT reimbursements owned to companies. Congo's economy has been badly damaged by the coronavirus pandemic and is forecast to contrast by 2.4% this year. And that's it on the program. Thank you for watching. I'm Chimeze Obi Iwago.